Great. Good afternoon, everybody. It is now 1.30 on Tuesday, October 5th, 2021, and I'll call this meeting of the Englewood Environmental Foundation to order. So first we'll do roll call, if you could, Michelle. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, Director DeAndre. Present. Director Lowe. Present. And Director Underhill. Present. All right, great, we have a quorum. So our next order of business is recognition of public comment. We have not received any emails um, or items of from public comment. And I don't see anybody else in the line. Um, Michelle, are you aware of anybody else that I can't see for some reason? No, we didn't okay. get anything. All right, thank you. All right, so we'll move down to item number three is approval of the minutes from August 25th, which were included in your packet. So if you've had a chance, we'll just take a quick refresh of those and then I'll entertain a motion to approve those. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of August 25th. Okay, thank you. So there's a motion, is there a second? I'll a second. Okay, a second from Director Lowe. And uh, so we'll take a vote, if you could, Michelle. Director Lowe? Yes. Director Underhill? Yes. And Director DeAndre? Yes. All right, motion carries, thank, thank you. you. Okay, and then, um, so we have an old business item related to the guild lease, and then we have a new business item related to a change order for related to the RTD elevator. So I'm gonna take us out of order just cause John's on the line um, and we'll do the change order first and then we'll talk about the guild next. So um, John, take it away if you wanna give us a little overview. Okay, um, good afternoon, E4. Uh, like Maria had mentioned, so um, uh, we do have uh, a few change orders in regards to the RTD elevator, just a, a brief history of the RTD elevator. So back, um, stemming back in December of last year, 2020, actually Christmas weekend, the, uh, the elevator was taken down offline and definitely over a emergency call. Um, so before that, we had had a few work orders put together to, you know, for lack of better words, putting band-aids on the elevator to keep it up and running because it had been a challenge. And um, as soon as that was exhausted after the Christmas weekend, I had mentioned when um, there was an emergency call and there was a, um, a citizen trapped inside of the elevator, emergency services came and then ultimately um, ended the, the functionality of the, the elevator door. So what I had done after that is approached um, ThyssenKrupp, which is now TKE Elevators, um, to give a modernization quote. And I actually got a few other quotes and um, went through the proper uh, procurement channels as far as getting competitive quotes. And we ended up um, um, sourcing out to Syncrup because of the best value because they are the manufacturer of the existing elevator. So with that said, we did have the modernization um, agreement um, put in place. And then after months of coordination as far as material release to actually getting the project up and, up and going, there was a few unforeseen conditions that were discovered by TKE elevators um, stemming from change order one to change order four. So a brief description of the first change order was, um, it was for additional work stemming from draining and power washing the existing elevator pit, which had not been done since the inception, since the construction of the original elevator. Um, so that is, that is um, indicated in the summary description of, for change order one uh, for about $6,000. Uh, the second one was, um, was highly recommended. And again, unforeseen condition at the time. Um, 
there was no sump pump that was required by code at the previous code um, for the elevator. Um, now that we're touching and remodernizing the elevator, now that everything needs to be updated to code. So the sump pump pin was highly recommended and it was also a, a code compliance item as well. Um, the third and fourth um, change orders kind of correlate with one another. Change order three, so we, we, we did um, have a coordination meeting with the proper uh, fire marshal um, elevator, state elevator inspector, which uh, we also talked about code compliance as well. So they had indicated that a installation of a fire suppression system was in order to meet code compliance since the new code um, had stated that from previous code back, I believe in 99 was the, was the code that the elevator was originally built under. So there was um, change order three, which um, for permit reasons, we had to uh, recreate CAD files for the structure, pretty much the elevator room over to the freestanding elevator shaft to um, enable to uh, create the permit drawing to show all of the new systems. Uh, so that was change order three. And then change order four is the actual glycol fire system itself um, in, in the magnitude of, of, of $49,100. So those are kind of a summary of the four um, change orders that we have um, to approve. Maria, real quick, can we add Jackie back into the meeting? She just sent an email. She She's here, but in the attendees list. Oh, no, I didn't see she dropped off. Yeah. She said she could hear, but just kind of. Okay. I don't have any questions about this. It seems pretty standard to have to meet code if we're making any changes, so. Uh, trying to gain some some steam like um, yeah. as of a week ago Monday there they are on site um, they did begin the modernization part of it um, which I got a detailed schedule um, runs us through to the end of the month um, and that's just for the modernization project itself um, that does not include the um, the fire suppression yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest question, you know, and obviously this will have to go to council too, but we need really need to identify where this additional funding is com coming from. You know, CO one through three is pretty minor, but forty nine thousand for the glycol system is significant, obviously. And so we're going to have to. Um, it'll probably be for foregoing some of the other capital work that was planned in order to fund this, um, or we need to take it from. E fund balance. So I don't know if you have thought about that, Jack, here, if there's any recommendations from finance, but um, the intent would be is that, you know, I, I don't, we can't not do it, I guess. So it's, it's a necessity in order to get the, um, the um, sign off from the fire marshal to put in this glycol system. So it was an unknown expense at the time we started this project, but again, it's, it's really not optional at this point. Yeah, I think I reviewed the uh, uh, key financial briefing with council last night. Um, I have the 2022 PIM expenditures. The year-to-date August financials show we have spent close to a million at the end of August. And we have 1.5 million budget, which means we still have half a million remaining for the rest of the year from September to December. So I know if we if we still have half a million remaining, uh, we can calculate what's the normal expenditure. Also, add all the change order dollar amount and see how much we may have by the end of the year. If not enough, last year since we have a credit with RTD, the dollar amount is three hundred seventy-seven thousand. If not enough, we can tap into the credit from 2020. But we okay. need to 
some planning uh, if, if we are going to have any, any savings or overage based on the current budgets. That would more be my recommendation. Okay, good. Yeah. So it sounds like we should be shouldn't be a problem, but then we'll just need to explain it within the memo is exactly where we're going to take that funds from. So, okay. Sounds good. Um, so John, and then just a second question. So we don't need to run a water line to supply this. So the glycol system is kind of self-contained. It's, it's my understanding with my brief conversation with Fire Marshal uh, Smith that uh, a designated water line may or may not be required just for pressure reasons, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but that was to their discretion if he wanted to uh, grant a variance. Um, currently there is domestic water in, the, in, in the, the area that feeds the RTD bathrooms adjacent, but, the, um, but that was the, the, the determining factor whether, whether or not he was going to, to grant us that variance. Um, so that, that I, I believe that still may, may be unopened. That question might be unopened with him. Okay. So there's the potential, just kind of an FYI, that we could incur additional expenses related to this project as well. So, and TKE doesn't do water lines. So we'd be hiring a contractor to, and, and there's not a nearby water line. So it's, it's a pretty significant effort if we were needed to undertake that. Correct. John, how soon will the fire marshal give us their verdict if we need to do that or not? Um, I haven't formally put in the request yet. I wanted to get um, the board's temperature about this latest glycol system that we needed to add. Um, so that, that is still yet to be determined. So how many months has it been down now, John? Almost 10? Yeah, yeah, it was literally Christmas weekend of 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I think, you know, our, our approach is we need to get this up sooner rather than later. So um, hopefully we can work with the fire marshal to at least get it operational. And then maybe if there's still work needed to do that, at a later date or after we put it back into um, operation. Yeah, because as is the way, the way the project's going right now, so everything as far as the cab portion modernization, all of that is going in. And these last couple items that are gonna be open on the permit per se are going to be fire suppression and then whatever um, the other additional requirements of water line. So the project, itself the main project can be done but it's going to be open-ended for the closeout portion of the permit to check the box for the fire suppression and a designated water source if that's yep. what they desired gotcha okay hmm. okay any further discussion or questions Otherwise, I'll make a motion to approve change orders number one through four related to the RTD elevator rehabilitation project. I will second. And a second from Director Underhill. Uh, any other discussion? All right. Michelle, can you please take a vote? Yep. Yeah, um, Director Lowe. Director Lowe? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, no, no. can. Thank you. Uh, Christina, um, sorry, Director Underhill? Yes. And Director DeAndre? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, we'll, we'll jump back up to uh, new business, or old business, excuse me, which is um, the guild lease forbearance. Um, as I, as I had shared with the other two directors a few days ago or last week, the guild is looking at a potential acquisition by a third party. Um, so they've asked two questions is, can their lease just be 
assigned to this new owner, which I think the answer in talking to our uh, EF attorney is yes, there is a provision within there that it can. So with all the terms that are currently in place, however, that lease doesn't talk about anything about rent forbearance. So I think that was the other question is, are we as um, a group willing to continue that um, for a period of time? Are we ready to just say no, no more? Um, and that's, I think, the, the point that we want to talk about today, because I think obviously that will weigh into their, perhaps the new owners thinking about what is the rent situation um, before they enter into any kind of purchase deal. So I did send out as well the financials. I don't know, Jackie, if you've had a chance to look at those. Um, and if maybe you want to offer your thoughts on those, if you have. Yeah, I have. I also calculated a profitability for 2018, 2019, 2021 um, based on their financials. I will be happy to share my screen with you so you can see their profitability. Um, so how can I get the presenter more? Uh, request remote control. I can share my screen with you. Jackie, it's down in the bottom where you have the mute and unmute. Uh huh. It, that green button says share screen. Try that. Do you oh. see one? Okay. Can you see my screen? Is it big enough? Okay. Yeah. 2018, 2019, I don't have 2020, 2021 year to date on this. Uh, their revenue for this year are 120,000. and for the year of August. And I was calculating their profit. Normally, when we calculate a company's profitability, we added back their depreciation, interest, and taxes. In this case, I only added back depreciation. I did not add back interest payments. But that's my question. I don't know who, do they have outstanding loans with the company? Why do they have interest expenditures? And who is it communitized with the venture capitalists? So, anyway, I calculated profit profits for the financial. Based on the year ending 2018, 2019, August 2021, I only add back the depreciation. If I add back the interest payment, the profitability will be much higher. So you can see their profitability for 2018, 22%, 2019, 18%, uh, 25% year to date. Because we weigh their rent, uh, they are supposed to pay us 3500 per month. And now, so basically, the majority of the profitability comes from <laughs> waiver of our rent. In fact, the city has to pay Elder not because they are actually the owner of the property. We pay them approximately 3400 per month. But we are incurring costs that they get to them. But I do have a question that after we do their balance sheet, I don't know why they have interest and who is the company. Are they a nonprofit? Why are they not paying taxes? Uh, and when will the said company come through? So this is the financial information for the board to consider uh, their request. Yeah, they're definitely not a nonprofit, Jackie. So they are a for-profit business, but that's weird that then there would be no taxes showing up. But I did see the depreciation. Mm -hmm. Should we have them answer these questions before we decide about moving forward? Well, I certainly can try. I think they're looking at making this deal sooner rather than later. So I think we can certainly go back to them. Um, my, my feeling though, is that, you know, I think we're coming out of COVID and I think we have to, I, our original plan was to evaluate this in May. We talked mm -hmm. about it in June. And then we said, let's give it until August. And now here we are in October. So I'm comfortable either ending the lease forbearance or continuing it through the end of the year, but then saying no more. So my, my thoughts were, if there's somebody who's willing to purchase this, then there must be a monetary gain of some sort. And I don't know if that's our role to evaluate that, 
or if it's just to make sure that we're getting the funds that we need to sustain the the EFS um, lease payment. So to me, I guess I feel like they've kind of run their time and we've given them a pretty significant deal already, but that's just my opinion. I would agree with that. I mean, we're still paying <laughs> for it they, and they're not. They still get so. the bill every month. So mm -hmm. exactly. So I would almost want to end it and uh, not give them a break anymore on this. Yeah. It's been a long time. It's been most of the year. Yeah. Jackie, any thoughts? Do you need those questions answered, I guess, before we, yeah. we um, just make a decision or give some direction to them? I, I don't think we need it. It'll be good to know. Uh, I wonder, I, I'm curious about the communities because they pay a lot of capital improvement for leasehold. Yeah. So if they have a venture capital behind the company, mm -hmm. then not ask for uh, rent abatement. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure about that or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is there an interest in extending it through the end of the year or just saying as of November 1st, you're making rent payments again? I would start November 1st paying rent again. So they get October, but start yeah. November. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to that effect. Is that the um, is that effective November first that the guild would re resume making their monthly payments um, and continue that in that um, regardless of ownership that that we would the, the forbearance, if you will, would end as of November first, twenty twenty one. I will second that. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any other discussion? Uh, are we ready to move to the next one or any discussion about? Uh, we should take a vote on this one first, yeah. Uh, Michelle, go ahead, if you could, please. Yeah, Director Lowe? Yes. Director Underhill? Yes. And Director DeAndre? Yes. That motion carries. Okay, thank you. I'll communicate that back to the guild and um, we'll go from there. Okay. I'll ask them those questions too, Jackie, just to close the loop on those things. All right. Um, then I think we have one other additional new item, new item of business, which was to close our, this um, account, this uh, bank account that we haven't been using in quite a while, it sounds like. So I think your question, Jackie, was to come to the board, just make sure that we want to close that. Um, and I guess my only question for you is, I, I believe that was kept in that separate account so that EFS finances were kept separate and, and documented that way. Where are the EFS finances now? Are they still in some other um, place? And we just why would we want to close the account, I guess? Or have we moved that money to where we don't need it? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I can call Kevin in to the conversation. Um, he realized we haven't been using that account for a while. Um, but I can ask, and it's better, best of practice, we just close that account. But the good question is we have another, or if we have multiple accounts. And this one just has not been used to uh, close Yeah, if it's something where there hasn't been activity, I guess I'm fine closing it. So. so I will ask him what kind of document is the board approval is good enough because he's not a signer. By the second, you and Maria are still the signer. Director Underhill, did you have any concerns about that or do you want to see more information? No, I think it's fine. That? Yeah, okay. if we haven't used it in a while, it probably can be closed. We've been paying plenty of things, so. <laughs> the money must there. be flowing through somewhere. So. <laughs> somewhere, yeah. <laughs> I'm okay closing it. Okay. Do you want a formal action on that, Jackie? Do you think we should do that? Yes. Okay. Um, then I'll make a motion to close the 
um, appropriate checking account, or excuse me, bank account. I don't know if it's a checking account, but bank account related to ETH that uh, Mr. Ingalls has identified as not having non-activity for over a year. I will second that. All right, any further discussion? Hey, Michelle, can you take a vote, please? Director Lowe? Yes. Director Underhill? Yes. And Director DeAndre? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, great, thank you. thank you. All right, is there any other business that any of the board members wish to bring up at this time? No, I was thinking what we can do to help you to bring um, a request to council member again regarding the third item. Here's what I'm thinking I could list 2021 budget and year to get expenditures when they need a job to estimate the remaining expenditures for the rest of the year. I'll put enough column on change order additional expenditure so we can see how much we will have last for the rest of the year or over it. Then that will be probably helpful for your presentation. Yeah, try and make that clear somehow so they understand that better. I yeah. would agree. Okay. Yeah, we'll follow up on that and modify that one um, council item. And then, uh, John, maybe you can have Jackie take a quick look at that and just see if we can formulate that in a different way on that contract approval summary somehow. Yeah, and because I was kind of contemplating on the direction to go as far as like literally spelling out what each individual value means on that. But Jackie, I could, I could touch base with you and um, see what your thoughts are on that moving forward. Okay. Thank you. All right, see no other business. I'll adjourn this meeting at 1.57 p.m. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.